Content warning. This podcast is intended for a mature audience. Contains graphic descriptions of violence and explicit language. Hello, friends, and welcome to Season 3 of Pods of the Multiverse. We are an unofficial D&D podcast where four of us get together and play 5th edition rules in some of our favorite settings. My name is Jeppy, and I will be portraying the world of Icewind Dale and its inhabitants. Joining me are three of my favorite humans playing our main party this season. I'm Scala. I play Wink Wuggins, the halfling bard, who is very hard to take by surprise. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I'm Andy. I am playing Everett, the reborn ranger. Excuse me, I meant Everett. Yes, that is what I said. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Jimmy. I'm playing Jib, the sea elf fighter, who is an expert in all manner of uh, fish shit and jib shit, nautical <laughs> bullshit. It's all jib. Stuff. It's, it's, it's boats. Sh- boat stuff. It's jib shit. It's all under the it's, umbrella it's of jib shit. That's the most <laughs> sideways negging of Jeppy I've ever heard Jimmy do. <laughs> <laughs> like, I thought it was a great moment. He wasn't wrong. Just, <laughs> no, no it is he was. Shit. Guess he wasn't. No, jib has become part of the overall lore of D anD. d Now, instead of like ship mechanics, there's jib mechanics. There's jib shit. Jib has proficiency in nautical vehicles, and he can literally speak with fish. So, you know, it's jib shit. It's jib so, shit. Anyway, we appreciate you listening, and as always, please review our episodes and engage with us on our Twitter and Discord server. Please check out our Patreon. We would appreciate a subscription there. Uh, with all that out of the way, let's get into the episode so last we left our adventurers in Icewind Dale after getting their assignment from Kessa our three heroes made their way around Cairdeneval to investigate a recent string of murders they discovered that the murders are seemingly connected all the victims working for the nearby fishing camp owned by Phil Barosh which is a conglomerate well known throughout Icewind Dale Eventually, the heroes discovered, after an attempted attack, that a nearby cult known as the Black Sword may be responsible for these murders. They made their way towards the Care, a known hideout, only to find it more or less empty. After an attempted rescue, our heroes were cornered by a mysterious man, seemingly with the intent to attack. All right, so three of you and the young, hopefully soon to be former houndskeeper boy, Sit near the gate at the edge of the care. We don't know if that's going to be successful yet or not. Yeah, that's why I said hopefully. <laughs> Whether we escape <laughs> or not, he probably won't be the houndskeeper anymore. <laughs> yeah, either they'll <laughs> kill him or he will escape. So actually, probably one way or the other, he's not going to be a houndskeeper much longer. Anyway, the four of you sit at the gate, and the two cultists still are in front of you. They have both dropped to their knees and you turned around to find the drow elf. And the last thing he had said to you was, uh, how dare you interfere with our work. He's going to go ahead and roll into the initiative as we start round two of the combat. However, I welcome any of you, if you'd like to try and talk to this gentleman, you're welcome to. Or you can just assume he's, he's not nice. And Okay. And he is in the initiative, all right. Just a clarifying question how far away from us is he because he just came out of the he came out of the gate slowly walking towards you think of it like gladiator when he's like holding his hands out you know or like bane and batman like when he's holding his hands out to fight okay i have the image but the physical distance i was getting there (laughs) at this point let's say 90 feet away okay and he rolled 18 on initiative so he will go after Everett. Are we back to the top of the round? Yeah, this is round two. Now. These cultists are still conscious? They are still conscious, yeah. Okay. I am going to move towards them, getting myself away from this new figure that has appeared, and I will aim for the fairy-fired target as I draw my longbow with the intention of making a path for our party to continue. Cool. Go for it. And that is going to be 15 plus 8. Easy. Done. And... We've got seven points of here. Beautiful. I was still pretty far away from them at the beginning of the first round, so I'm going to try and use as much movement as I can to close the distance between this gate that we're trying to move through. Awesome. Cool, cool. Cool. You notice again, both of them reel back in pain. They're looking pretty hurt at this point. The one that you just attacked, the one that you had advantage against, is going to go for... 
Yeah, it'll go for you, even though that gives it disadvantage on its spell attack. And it will prepare its Ice Lance spell again, burning one of its spell slots. And it will say, in kind of a mumbled language, but you can kind of make out words like, do not interfere. You hear Cardoff at some point. And with disadvantage, does a 15 hit you? 15 is my AC. Cool, cool. All righty. Now let me roll dammies. Okay, that is seven cold damage. I actually didn't write it down. That is what you said last time. Okay, great. Let's keep it cold. Next up is the new drow elf that has entered the fold. He is going to use all of his movement to close the gap. And at this point, I think Everett is out of his range. So he will target when he came out. I think Jib had just done damage at the end of the last round. So he will look at you. You seem to be of particular use. And he will try to cast Hold Person on you. Who, me? Oh, yeah, you, buddy. You do have a D6 Bardic inspiration. I die. do, yes. You have that in the chamber. This is a saving throw? What am I rolling? It is a wisdom. That's not good. 16. Ought to do it. All right. Didn't even need the Bardic. All right. You may evade me all you like, but the Black Sword will take what it wants. Oh, uh, yeah, you probably know who's <laughs> up next in the fucking initiative order, huh? That would be useful. It's Wink. Oh, I thought Jib went before me. No matter. They say in character. <laughs> this is a voice that takes some acclamation to. Oh, yeah, you got to walk your way into it. I yell back at the drow. You're Cardoth, I take it. That would be my name, yes. Well, if whatever work you're doing involves holding this here youth against his will, that's work I'm happy to be interfering with. <laughs> Love that. The boy is of no consequence to us. That's not the story I got from him. He is of a specific use, but expendable. You may take him, but... And Everett, he's going to look to you. You may leave the stone. I don't acknowledge him. I simply look to Wink. We must be leaving now. I have a very bad feeling about this individual. I'm not very good at it, but can I roll insight on the whole <laughs> stone thing? Yeah. That seems a little weird. 17. Yeah, cool. Remind me, Everett, you, in Dinim's Rest, you showed everyone and at least talked about... Everybody knows what's up with it, yep. Yeah, okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, on a 17, Wink, you would know that when Cardoff says stone, it's probably referring to that object since... Ah, the glowing rock. The glowing rock, correct. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. I think all first game you called it an ore. Correct, and I felt it would be really weird if you just referred to it the same way as you three have been referring to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, that makes total sense. Okay, so Wink will say, now I reckon you aren't someone who spends too much time in polite company, but among civilized folk, we don't just take what we want, so we're gonna be leaving with all of what's ours. What makes you assume it was stolen? The Wraithocyte was promised to us. If anything, you are the thieves. I'm gonna move and dash out the gates as far as I can get, 50 feet, I believe. And then I will, as I turn back, give a bardic inspiration to Everett as well. Cool. And I will strum my banjo and sing. Tonally, this is going to be perfect for this moment. Uh, let's see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Um, These are always worth the wait. It's fine. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> The best part is the warm-up. <laughs> oh my god, it's so good. Oh, creep a card off. What you gonna do? Everett's got a bad feeling about you. <laughs> Everett has a bad feeling about fucking everybody, though. <laughs> um, cool. And we go to Jib. Does this guy look physically imposing? Like, scary? He's a normal-ass size draw elf. He's, like, a little bit large for a draw elf, but, yeah, nothing crazy. Did I just give you the final boss early, like, as a means to test your res- No. I think we can take this guy, Everett. <laughs> <laughs> Everett does not does not acknowledge that. I do give a very glaring side eye. Okay, I'm gonna say to Alisar. All right, now run along, run along now. Go with Wink. You'll be safe. And I'm going to stand my ground, ready in action for a melee attack. Defend myself if he tries to come after us. If I have the distances about right, I think I'm at the gate. All right, so I'm going to stand between Alisar and Everett and the drow that's approaching us. Stand my ground, get ready to attack if he tries to pass. Cool. Awesome. All right. Take the boy and run. Anything else you want to do? No. 
All right, sweet. We'll go on to the other cultist. They're going to go for Jib, actually, because Jib seems to be standing his ground against their leader. He's going to go for you. He's just going to do a standard attack, melee attack against you. I don't think. Let me just make sure. Does a 14 hit you? Nope. No, we doesn't. Okay. Well, that was a wash. We'll go back to the top. Everett. There's still one right next to me? Yes. The one next to you is the fairy fired one, fortunately. Great. From beneath my robes, I pull out a crescent moon-shaped hand axe, and I'm just going to try and drive it straight into him with both hands. Cool. <laughs> and fairy fired. That is a nat 20. Yes! Yeah, go ahead and do the damage that I presume will kill it. Maybe not, though. There's a chance you could not. But it's small. That is going to be 12 slashing damage. Okay. As your axe meets this enemy, you notice that both of them collapse. But I would not want to deny you. Everett, please tell us a tale of how two cultists, seemingly at once, came to fall in Icewind Dale. <laughs> okay. So just very callously and coldly, Everett hides his longbow back under his cloak with one hand with the second, draws his hand axe from his other side, and with both hands just cleaves into this cultist's neck, and it collapses in heat. In front of him, he looks back to see the other cultist collapse in the same way. Sick! And he will also hold this ground to let Alsar escape. I don't know if we're going to stay and engage or not yet, but I'm going to go ahead and bonus action Hunter's Mark Cardiff. Awesome. Sweet. You see, I point my hand axe towards him, and a dull blue flare of my eyes mark him. Very nice. Next up is Cardoff. You didn't take any movement then, right? No. Okay. I'm still at this gate. Okay. In that case, Cardoff is actually going to focus on you, and even though Jib is in melee range and can easily take an AOO, he is going to intently focus on you and walk towards you. Jimmy, if you want to right now take your AOO, go for it. Okay. This was my readied action, though I guess it's the same. Wouldn't really be a difference here. Oh, sorry. It's all right. I'm going to, as he tries to pass me, lash out with my saber, and that's going to be a 17 to hit. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's 10 piercing damage. He feels it. He noticed that one. But nonetheless, he's going to continue his slow, dramatic walk towards Everett. And then, you know, closing that distance, we'll say to you, Everett, the stone is all I ask. But I guess I don't need to ask, do I? And he will cast Cultist's Charm on you. Please make a wisdom saving throw. Okay. Uh, here we go. That is going to be... You have an inspiration die. <laughs> I don't think I need it. That's a 16 plus 4. That's a dirty 20. Okay. <laughs> the way you paused dramatically made me think it might be important to bring that piece of information <laughs> um, up. <laughs> well, it, it rolled out of my dice tray, so I was like, I had to look for it behind my iPad. Okay, awesome. Wink, what are you doing? Where is Alisar? Has Alisar done anything? I will say that at this point... Let's treat Alisar as kind of under your care. If you are intending to escort Alisar out, Alisar will dutifully follow you. The dog's fucking bolted. The dogs are gone. They, they didn't. And how old is Alisar, Luck? Sorry, like, like 12? Yeah, that's a great age. I was going to say like 10, but I also like 12 can be canon. Okay. Double digits old enough to moderately take care of himself. I will point back towards Caradenaval. Now, about 10 minutes, pack yonder. There's an inn, what called the Uphill Climb. Now you go there and you wait for us. You stay safe. Looks like I gotta help my friends here, but I want you out of danger. And assuming he follows those instructions? Uh, yeah, uh, th thank you for everything. Thank you. Thank you. And he's just gonna run off. His eyes are wide. He's a kid. He's pretty scared. Alright, very good. I will move back towards the care and yeah, this is probably going to miss, but I will try and throw a dagger at Cardoff. Cool. I can still do that within 60 feet at disadvantage. Yep, that one. <laughs> I pull my dagger off my belt, and it, it's cold, and it slips around in my hand, and uh, I drop it. All right. Yeah, that's a big oof. That's a big oof. All right. Wink and Everett exist in two different worlds. Yeah, they did not <laughs> grow up in the crazy. same place at all. <laughs> oh, my uh, God. Wild. 
wild. Okay, cool. Wink, that is you. We move on to Jib. All right. I'm going to walk up behind this drow with my sword drawn. His back is to me, right? Correct. So I'm going to point my saber at his turned back while he's dealing with Everett. Now, there's an easy way we can do this. We have some questions for you. (laughs) I will say nothing more. And you see, he sticks his tongue out and just bites it off. What the? Whoa. Excuse me? Oh. (laughs) Holy shit. (laughs) Jim's character. Oh. (laughs) (laughs) That's fucking dramatic. (laughs) I didn't expect that. All right. Well, I guess we're going to do this the hard way. I'm going to attack him with my sword. Please be in that one, though. (laughs) We're going to do this the hard way. It's middling. It's a middling roll, and you're debating that bardic. No, it's a really low roll, and I think I might just get it in with the bardic. No, I'm going to action surge and try again. Yay! That was a total of seven, by the way. Uh, That's an at one. Oh, no! (laughs) Oh, my God! (laughs) Maybe if you use your bardic, it will be less embarrassing. Mm. You won't hit, though. (laughs) <laughs> no. <laughs> I guess we are going to do this the hard way. <laughs> we are going to do this. Jesus. Uh, okay. I whiff twice in quick succession. Yeah. And you did use that action surge, right? Because you were not that's at right. advantage. Yeah. yeah. I used okay. the action surge. And, oh, boy. That's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> cool. All right. That gets us back to the top. Everett. Yeah. I guess I'm just going to shoot this guy. I'm going to take my longbow back out and... Well, he is Hunter's Marked. Attack. I'm going to spend this Bardic Inspiration dice. Okay, so for a total of 14. You get the feeling that you have just barely hit this <laughs> Okay. <laughs> yeah, so that hits. Go ahead and roll the damage. That's the power song. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh, strange. Their tune fills me with an odd accuracy. And that is not great. That is going to be seven piercing damage. Okay, cool. He reels back. He's been hurt, but he's still looking more than able-bodied at this point. All right, and that is going to be his turn. He whips around to you, Jib, looking irritated that you've interfered with his path towards Everett. Oh, hello. If he had a tongue, he'd probably make a comment, but he doesn't anymore. He got rid of that. But he will cast Acid Stream at you. Can you make me a dex save, please? Man, low rolls tonight. If you cut this guy's tongue off, technically he can't really use any verbal component spells. Ooh, gotcha. Was him biting his tongue off cool? Just say. If you wanted to do some some dramatic shit, some crazy Jeffy ass shit. Was him biting his tongue off cool? These are your consequences as a DM. Oh my god. As a DM, I'm gonna ignore that, because it was cool. Unless you all have a major problem with it, in which case, that's fine. Joining the bench as the rules lawyer, number two, on backup. <laughs> as part of the jury here, I will allow it as long as you roleplay the verbal component as if you don't have a tongue. All right, yeah, I'll do that. <laughs> you will start to do his best to cast Acid Stream at you, saying, or something like that. Make a deck save. Commit to it. Do it one more time. One more time? Yeah, okay. because you went right into another sentence after that. Do a clean take. I also don't feel like I was in his timbre. <laughs> What now? And as you question it, you notice acid being flung in your direction. Please make a deck save. Yeah, I made the deck save like six minutes ago. It was was a seven. Oh, you fail as you are coated in acid. All right. You are going to take four acid damage now. And that is going to be... His turn, Wink. Right. I'm going to run up to Cardoff. If I can get around the other side of where Jib is, I'll do that. Up to you. Yeah, actually, because Jib is further away. So you organically get to the other side of him. You get to a flanking position easily. Wanted to make sure. And I'm going to pull the pitchfork rapier off my (laughs) belt and take a stab. So much flavor. Okay, a 14 hits, you said? Indeed it do. That's what I have. Nice. And that will deal... 10 points of piercing. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Dang. Reels back in a ton of pain this time. Ooh. Grimaces, grunts it out. 
tongueless. Looking pretty beat up at this point. Definitely not death door, but beat. We gave y'all a chance to do things reasonably. Don't say we didn't. <laughs> Flowers in your direction, but it's not his turn. It is Jibs and Jib. One second, you're going to take damage at the top of your turn from the acid stream. <laughs> My God, these dice rolls are trash. It's another four. All right. I mean, Jib's getting <laughs> hurt. Let's see if we can finish this soon. At this point, I'm probably flanking with Wink. Correct. I just pulled up to the flank. Gotcha. Okay. So I'm going to attack him with my saber. That's good. That's a 20. Three to hit. Ought to do the trick. Okay. You you reckon? You know. I reckon. I'm the one who does the reckoning. Now. Oh, that's true. You can do a reckon, don't you? God. Anyway, that's ten piercing damage. Wow. I thought we would take another turn. I guess we're not. But you did the exact amount of damage. So, Jib, please tell us a tale of how the now tongueless Cardoff came to pass in Icewind Dale. Well, Cardoff, I'm really sorry I have to do this, but you know. <laughs> It is what it is. And I'm going to take a step forward and lunge my saber right into his stomach. All right. Awesome. Beautiful. That's all. As he collapses. He collapses wordlessly. He does stretch his hand out, reaching towards Everett, presumably for that stone, but is soon lifeless. And all that's left is the cold snowfall peppering his corpse, and we exit initiative. Too bad about all this. You got anything on him? Might point to what they was doing here? He did not seem very willing to talk, did he? (laughs) (laughs) Rather dramatic, these cultists. That is the fucking statement of the century. All of you are welcome to do an investigation check on his body. Okay. I'll give someone the help action if they've got better investigation than me. Mine's only a plus one. I got plus zero. I've got a two. (laughs) Looks like it's going to wink. But also, Jim, you still have your D6 that you could use. That's correct. That's true. We might as well all do it. I rolled pretty badly. That's only a four from me. How long does this bardic last? Ten minutes. I don't expect us to get into too much trouble in the next ten minutes. I'm just going to use it and fucking kill this check. Here we go. That's a 19. Oh, you, know, you don't find anything. I also got a 19. Yeah, you don't find anything. No. On a 19, you easily find everything on the body, which is actually not too much. These cultists leave a pretty simple life from what you can tell. However, he didn't use it during combat, but he did have a dagger. It is non-magical standard dagger and then you also see as you peel back the robes left on his body more of this faintly red ore that andy found on the shoreline on his person is it like similar size yeah they're not all perfect matches they're all of different sizes but they're all of roughly the same size they're all like palms like you could put all of them in the palm of your hand and this is in a bag or something in pockets adorning different pockets inside of his robe and Mm -hmm. you can just pull them out if you want to They're not, like, socketed to him in any way. Mm -hmm. He's just holding them. Now, as far as I can tell, he called this stuff Wraithside. Y'all ain't never heard of that, have you? I do. I heard him say this. Can I make a history check? You may all make a history check. It's going to be a tough one, but, yeah. First game, we all rolled Arcana and didn't really get anywhere. But maybe now that we know a name... 18. 16. 14. On an 18 jib, I think you wouldn't know exactly if it's what you had heard of before. The name sounds somewhat familiar, and you would guess that it is relatively newer. It's been newly manufactured and discovered. does not have a rich history of being mined and processed. Okay. On an 18, do I know if by newer you mean, like, within my lifetime? Which is, like, a little over a century. Easily, yes. I'm going to share that with the group. We share in this group. Unless you're Everett. Well, I share. Jib shares. <laughs> there could be more inside. What are we doing? Well, I ain't ashamed to say I'm a bit spent in terms of my magical capabilities. And, you know, I'm feeling a bit worn down from that fall earlier. And Jib looks like whatever goo got sprayed on him did a number on him. So, I don't know. Depends on what we can expect in there. There's more troublemakers than maybe it'd be best to regroup, come back later. That being said, they could skedaddle on out of here and take any evidence of their wrongdoing with them between now and then. So, it's not an easy decision to make. Maybe we should go back to Quim, tell him to keep a lookout. Is the door that he came out of still open? Yeah, it is. I'll give you a perception check to try and surmise what's ahead. Yeah, go for it. Yeah, I'll peer in and see if I can see anything. And that's a 18 perception. Cool. All right. On an 18, you notice... I would best describe it as a great hall. It's a large room. You're able to see doors on both sides, and then you see a big staircase, but you cannot tell where that staircase goes to. 
And the reason is because it's one of those staircases, like it goes up and then there's a left and right pathway. Mm. So like you can't see what the second floor resolves into from here. I do not see anyone inside. You would think if their leader was so easily disposed, this would be quite troubling. They don't seem too organized. I don't know. Alisar said there'd be a lot of them. Perhaps it's best we don't go looking for trouble tonight. Wink raises an excellent point, however. We have an opportunity here. I will not, Jib, go looking for trouble, but permit me this offering of teamwork. And if I run into something I cannot handle, I shall return as swiftly as I am able. And I would like to stealth as far in to this compound as I can before I see anyone. Okay, roll me stealth. All right, while he's doing that, I want to use my second wind and stay close behind, but not so close that I will also need to make a stealth check. I put up a finger to my masked and hooded face. This is something I have history with. I would not want you to get in my way. And then I point to his wound. Besides, you should take care of that. 1d10 plus 2. Well, I rolled a 1 on the d10, so... Oof! So that's... I'll just tell you. I'm at 10. All right, favorite's going on. We might as well be prepared now. People don't take too much notice of me, but big feller like you, I have another seven back as I cast Cure Wounds Awesome. on Jib. Thanks, pal. Thanks, bud. That's literally all Clark said. <laughs> <laughs> well, Clark, Clark goes, thanks, pal. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Jib's thanks, bud. Yeah, th- yeah, thanks, bud. Or friendo, I guess, would be the, the other one. <laughs> bud? Okay, it's bud. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Don't twerk nothing. And, Everett, do you have, like, a cloak or anything behind you? What do you mean? Like, are you wearing, wearing... like, a long cape or a cloak? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to use my naturally stealthy ability and just duck under the cape. Oh, my God. Because I can hide behind a medium creature and I'm going to stealth with you. Holy shit. Andy, this is how I want to do this. I want your stealth roll to determine the fate of everybody. Go ahead and roll me stealth. (laughs) Yeah, okay. Oh, great. That's an at 20. Okay, cool. Yeah, Enjoy that. No. All right. <laughs> I, I will. On an at 20, I'll just say, like, tell me what you want to do, and I will tell you at what point it may become dangerous, because that's how we're going to do this. That's the reward you get for an at 20. Cool. So, hood down, cloak around this halfling trailing behind me. I stick to the walls, to the shadows, and whatever dark places I can find in this great hall, and make my way towards whatever the nearest door is. They're equidistant, so just say left or right. (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Sorry. (laughs) Now, I find myself, whenever I'm in a quandary like this, just go left. I'll have to remember that one. Very well. I'll go left. Or I will peer into the left door. This door actually does not have a window at all. The right one does have a window. Square window with, like, wrought iron bars. Okay. This one is just, like, a solid door. There's nothing you can see beyond it. Then I will just gruff down to Wink and go to the right door. Cool. You peer in the door, and you see it is a small boxy room, and all you can really see is a desk. What you obviously can't see is anything kind of on the wall that is where the door is inside, obviously. But you can see the scope of the room, and it is just a desk and another door on the other side as you peer in from that little tiny boop. Okay. Can I gently try the handle of this door? Does it have a handle? Does it have... It does. Okay. And just see if it's unlocked. It is unlocked. Oh, he doesn't like that. (laughs) Everett. I look back in... We can continue up. Well, where there's a desk, there's like to be correspondence. And correspondence could be evidence. <sighs> yes. Focus on the task at hand. Again, wise. Very well. And I will open the door. Awesome. You enter the room. There's no one in here. It is a boxy room with another door on the other side and a desk. There is really nothing adorning the walls. Maybe a shield or something, but like nothing of note. I will say that if you want to check out the desk, all of you are welcome to give me an investigation check. I will go and check the other door first. Does that have a window as well or not? This one does not have a window. Okay. Then I will simply put my ear to it through my hood and see if I can hear anything, just to sort of make sure that this is a safe room to sit in for a second while Wink 
investigates. So 13 investigation, by the way. Got you. I'll resolve that in a moment. Andy, as you put your ear to the door, give me a perception check. Cool. That's a 18. Even on an 18, oddly, you hear a weird amount of nothing at this door. Complete silence. I'll invite you to give me an arcana check. Uh, sure. That's not suspicious at all. I'll go ahead and make one of those. Nope, that's only going to be an eight. Okay, yeah. Oddly silent. I suggest you hurry. Cool. Okay, uh, and you said, I'm sorry, a 13? Yep. You rifle around. You're able to find just kind of like a list of the amount of what you can definitely tell is the amount of wraithocyte that this encampment has taken in recently. Mm. And then a letter. You cannot make out a lot of the words. Because, again, like this is not common. This is some sort of, as I described it before, when they speak, and even when they write, it is sort of a bastardation of multiple languages. But you can certainly make out the proper noun, Kranich, a name in there, mm-hmm. and something about dealing with it, to be dealt with. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. On a 13, that's all you find. Jeppy, correct me if I'm wrong. Kranich is, was the mayor of the town speaker missing Mm -hmm. yeah now this is just a suspicion that i have but uh alisar said they had a hostage in here now if kranich has gone missing might be there somewhere in this building that's good thinking let's uh keep poking around that is not a bad suggestion might i make this one as well we take everything regardless of whether we know its full contents or not oh yeah i figured that'd go without saying and I'd stuff all the papers that I've been rifling through into whatever bag I have about. Very good. The door that you said was eerily silent. Just, like, as carefully as possible, I want to see if this one's unlocked, too. I don't want to open it. I just want to see if it's unlocked. It is locked. You go and you put your hand on the lock. Give me a roll for, like, how delicately you were able to turn this lock. That's a 14. Okay, cool. So on a 14, you rustle this knob enough to know that it is locked. And again, even though maybe a normal doorknob would have produced sound, this one produces absolutely none. There's something suspicious about this door. It is making no sound whatsoever. It is also locked. Perhaps another route. Mm, I reckon I could try taking a crack at it. I do keep a few spare banjo strings round about me. <laughs> That's such a stupid idea. Where would you ever get the idea to use an instrument strings to lock pick a door? <laughs> I reckon it might not be the proper tool, but oh, might give me a chance. No. <laughs> These are the wages of your sin, Giuseppe. Go for it. I'm going to let you do it. You are going to give me disadvantage in Ravnica. I'm going to let you flat roll it. I also think you're really good at the banjo. That's why. Everett backs up when he sees Wink go for the door. I did indeed give you disadvantage, (laughs) and I would have entirely accepted it here. But nevertheless, it will not matter as I roll the three. Okay. (laughs) Even adding five, I doubt an eight will open this door. It 100% does not. The banjo string plucks out. The door doesn't make any noise, but the string kind of made a little bink. What is it you're trying to do there? I'm trying to get in here, but we don't have the right tools for the job. We could try knocking the door down. I sort of pull up my sleeve and show my entirely lack of muscle. (laughs) I don't really have the right tools for that job either. I could give it a try. I do not suggest this. I didn't think so. Perhaps simply a key may be found. Otherwise, another course. As you are deliberating this door, I need all three of you to make me a perception check. A 16. An 18. Three. Cool. Jib, you're thinking about all the cool ways maybe you can bust down this door. But the other two of you (laughs) clearly hear a good amount of commotion coming from above you. If we are to continue on, we must hide very well. Otherwise, I think we should leave. Is there anywhere to hide in this room? Under the desk, but I don't think all three of you would fit. It's a very small room. I wonder if we went back to the doghouse. We could hide out there. You mean all night? Well, what was it that Alisar said? He figured that Cardoth was gone, then they'd disperse back to whatever other cult groups are about. Maybe if they do that, then we can look around this place for a prisoner. Or from that kennel out there, monitor them as they're leaving and seeing if they're taking anything interesting like with them. It is better than staying here. Let us go now. All right. So your plan is to go and go back to that kennel area and hide out? Yes, that's my brilliant plan. Okay. No way <laughs> this will no. go wrong. <laughs> cool. No, I'm here for it. They didn't see us in there before. It's no, true. better than staying in this tiny room with just a desk. Yes. <laughs> cool. 
All right, yeah, you all leave the room. Give me one more perception check. Seven. 22. 19. Awesome. This time you hear the sound of what you believe to be a pretty large door above you open, and you start to hear lots of footfalls, the sounding of a lot of different people. You probably don't need an insight roll to know that you probably need to hoof it to that kennel. I hoof it. Yeah, you hoof it. We do. Yup. You have enough lead time there to get there, and I'll say that you spend a good while there, probably a half an hour I would say unless there's something else you'd want to do after a certain amount of time passes otherwise the next thing that would happen would be about a half an hour of waiting leave that to the three of you they don't immediately come out of like the entrance of this building correct they do okay not. hmm you all go to the doghouse and they don't come out immediately I will say that you're welcome to question that or do whatever you want but it'll take 30 minutes of wait time before anything happens looks like they weren't following us we'll just go back to the door see what they're doing in there or i don't know i get the feeling something's gonna happen in about 30 minutes <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna sneak up and peer through the door all right cool i'm not gonna have you roll stealth but do roll me perception a dirty 20 the reason you did not need to roll stealth is because they're not in this great hall area but you can guess they're probably behind both of those doors hmm. okay I have no idea what's going on here. The other one didn't have a window on it. Can I see if they're closed from here? Are both of those doors closed again? They look to be closed. From your distance, you can't tell if they're maybe just cracked open. Man, this is seriously some, like, Resident Evil 4 cultist shit. (laughs) They're just, like, all running around this building. What's happening? (laughs) I look back at Wink. This is very strange. Yeah, I reckon it is. Do you think they're all down here now from what you can observe? What my senses tell me, everything that we have observed, unless by some powerful course of illusion, they are. All right, now let's go check the upstairs. All right. Welcome to Wink's Insane Schemes Corner. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) If the three of you want to go and check out what's going on upstairs, I will ask for a stealth check. Nat 20. This is not like, you're not all hiding under Wink's cloak. So you make, everybody make. 21. I got a 19. Okay. Easy peasy. Easy peasy. This is so insane. What are we yeah. doing? Literally, yeah, that's why I'm like, this gives me the like the weirdest Resident Evil vibes. We're literally just walking around this building while people go in and out of other doors. This is Scooby-Doo shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right. You all go upstairs. The door is open, so you don't have to worry about like making any noise going in or it being locked. You walk into the room, and without any perception roll, you just see a bunch of bedding. It's a long room, and you would probably count out 25 or so beds, and they were all recently occupied, so you can guess that all the commotion is from the people that have recently left these beds, presumably all cultists. It would appear as if it was not an illusion. Is there anything else on this upper level? Yeah, any more, like, desks or anything, just beds. The staircase breaks into a left and right, and then arches back together to meet this one door. So this is the only room of the upstairs part of this building, so resolve that. In this room, regardless of if you gave me whatever you gave me for a perception, this is just a bunk area. All right, what now? It would appear there are only two more doors. What in tarnation you reckon they're doing down there? I don't think we could possibly guess cool so do you want to start making your way downstairs now or never all right you can start to make your way downstairs and as you do (laughs) what what nothing just okay (laughs) as we do as you do you notice both the doors open and cultists just start to slowly walk and pour out of these doors and just make their way towards that main entrance into that courtyard area. Are they coming like towards us or past us? They don't even notice you, nor do they care. We're still on the top of the stairs, right? Oh, okay. You are, and I would say you can all give me, this can just be perception. 13. 14. 17. Cool. They aren't looking around for anyone at all. Every one of their eyes is fixed in front of them as they just slowly walk towards the entrance and into the courtyard. What was yours, Everett? 17. On a 17, I'd say that you notice under their robes looks a little full. Give me an insight check. Okay. This is a 19. Cool. On a 19, you would probably guess that they have cleared out this building for anything valuable to them. What you can't say for sure. It appears as though they are abandoning this place. Doesn't look like they got a prisoner with them. I I can't see over this banister. (laughs) Even on Andy's higher roll, no. Couldn't see one. Maybe they left some doors open. Indeed. Let us wait them out then. 
you wait them out, and it looks like, yeah, both those doors were left open. I want to check Let's the spooky check. one first. What does that mean? The one that you messed with the knob? Yeah. All right. I feel like Scala was going to say the other one. Wink was going to go check the other door. The one on the left. Go for it. All right, cool. Everett waits. Okay, Everett waits. So you go to the one on the left then. Wink, you lead. Mm -hmm. You open that door to find a larger room. There's no other door in it. Give me a perception check, and I will tell you how much you're able to take in here. 14. On a 14, you notice immediately and almost weirdly there is no furniture in this room. But there are empty crates and buckets, baskets mounted to the wall. All of them are empty. But I will allow you and anyone else that followed you into the room to give me an investigation check. Rifling through them quickly, any little motes of red dust? Might depend on that investigation check. Oh, that's a 21 investigation check. Tell me that this was where they were keeping all the rapist site, because I figured it out. This is indeed where they were keeping all the rapist site. It sounds like you didn't need the investigation check, because, yeah, it was pretty obvious. Wink Woggins, ace detective. Totally. This is what this was. This was a storeroom for all the rapist sites. There is nothing else to get here. You got the main thingy. On the mini-map, the... The, the color of the room changed, changed because now you found everything. To- blue there you go you found everything okay. yes yeah good who wants to know about the other door <laughs> yeah everett's gonna go try the other door the silent door the silent door it is cracked open yeah okay mm, i'm not gonna open it any further but i'm gonna try and look inside because it's cracked open mm-hmm. i'm actually gonna ask you to give me a perception check to see what you can actually even find craning okay. your neck around to get a good angle Dead body. It's going to be a dead body. Probably. Let me ask this. I assume this whole place is lit by torches or something. Is there any light coming from inside this room or is it pretty dark? To give you an idea of how much light is in this room, there'd be like one torch in it. It's a small room that you're about to look into. (laughs) It's pretty dim, but you'll be able to look at shit in there. Uh, Okay, that's only a nine. Cool. On a nine, all you can see is what looks to be some part of a human body. But you can't tell if it's moving. You can't tell what part it is. But, like, it's a silhouette of, like, maybe a whole chest or something. Yeah. What's in there? And I'm going to look in. Okay. I rolled a 17. Cool. 17. You can also see a human body. You're stopping and you're looking for a while. And you see the human body is, like, moving. As in it's a breathing person. It's not someone dead. And it looks to be strung up on (gasps) the wall. I'm going to take my hand axe and just gently put it to the door and try and open the door with it. So I'm not arm's length. I'm like being cautious in case this is like booby trapped or something. It is not. The door still makes absolutely no sound, but you are able to open the door. Deeply unsettling. More light is starting to peer into that room and you hear the ruffling of chains and you hear someone go, someone there. Do we hear someone say that? Yeah, absolutely. Oh, it's just the door that's silent. It's not the whole room. It is just ah, the door that is silent. Okay, okay. Oh, we could have knocked it down. No one would have noticed. You actually could have, <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> Speed run strats. Yeah. <laughs> is that Kranick in there? It is I. Who, who's there? I'm Wink Woggins. I'm here to rescue you. Thank you, good sirs. Thank you. Not a sir, but not an issue. Let's get you down from there. Cool. So I'm assuming at this point you step into the room? Yes. You go into the room. I'll just tell you kind of what you see as the light from the other room, which is much better lit, pours into this room. You see a middle-aged human male. He just has, like, scraps of cloth on him. Very dirty. Snot running down his face. Just looks unwell, generally speaking. And then in the room you can see, like, more crates and buckets. Clearly they came in here and just ditched this dude but came in for a little bit of extra rate, the site that they were storing in this area as well, and then left. Mm. You get him down, no roll required. He collapses to the ground weakly. Thank you. Thank you so much. Well, now, now, we didn't do this for free. (laughs) You're going to tell us your association with these people here. I have no association. They killed Sturm, and I'd witnessed it, and they captured me. Now, I'm not the most insightful of our bunch, but I'm going to roll inside anyway. Because I don't trust you. Andy looked at me like, couldn't wait. Fifteen, insight. I am fairly insightful. Allow me. That's a 19. On a 19, you can tell this dude is terrified, beat up, and not well. But you're not getting a sense of deception from this person either. Let me be a little more clear because I can see your trepidation, Scala. He is also not delirious. Okay, okay. That was me being like, oh, okay, I I guess my conspiracy theory was wrong. (laughs) Maybe we should bring him back to town, get him cleaned up, then ask our questions. If you was a witness to the murder, why didn't they kill you too? Why go through the trouble of kidnapping you? What takes effort and food? I don't know for sure, but my guess is they, they've they been looking through this wraithocyte. 
and they must have known I was the speaker, assumed I could be of use in obtaining more, but I don't know for sure. I'm grateful they kept me alive. Clarification. We asked the people in town after we found the ore if they knew what it was, right? And nobody did. I don't know if you asked them. I don't think we did. I don't remember asking anyone. You didn't. That's what I'm trying to remember. You kept it very close to the chest. Yeah, that's whatever it do. <laughs> Damn it. That is whatever it do. All right. Egg on my face. Yeah. Uh, sorry, something needs a bit of squaring for me. You say they were looking into this? As in, they were, like, staring at it? Or <laughs> interested in it? He's starting to show how worn down he is, and he's like, No, no, I, I misspoke. I mean, looking into obtaining more. I don't know what they want to do with it. Ah, right, right. Just a small clarification. Now, how are you associated with Sturm that you were dealing with them when they were murdered? It wasn't a matter of my association with Sturm. I know everyone in town. It was just that it was the wrong place, wrong time. Sometimes at night... I go for a stroll. Lately, I've been very ill. I was hoping to... I almost said beat it off. <laughs> um, <laughs> Stave it off? One night I was hoping to maybe fight it off with fresh air, but found myself at the cliffside and on the wrong side of witnessing Sturm being murdered at their hand. Well then, if you were a witness, tell us the blood, the sword-shaped mark. How are these made? What I saw was they had cut him open, and they took the blood in their hands and painted it on the wall. I don't know why. Call me simple, but I just like to think that there's some things in this world that are pure evil. Jib believes that after watching a cultist bite his own tongue off <laughs> not to talk to us. He nods understandingly. Now, Kranick, I know it's not the easiest thing to talk about, but if you're leaving any details out, more folk might be hurt in the future. So we need to know. You know, you can say this to us in confidence as your rescuers. If there's anything you're keeping from us, any details that might seem unimportant. There's nothing. Nothing I can think of. I know where the Wraithocyte is made. And you did not think this was important to us. He slumps down and looks sad about that. Why don't you make an insight roll? <laughs> okay. <laughs> 12. You're looking at a man that was sick, witnessed a murder, captured, and starved for a while. You think Everett gives a shit about this? And is now <laughs> disappointing people by not having the right information in the right order, and he feels pretty rotten. I think that's enough for now. This man needs help. Why did you come here? Well, I suppose we're investigating the murders. That'd be our job. Didn't expect to find you here. They seem to think you skipped town. Who's they? I'm the speaker. Oh, you know, people about town. They don't seem to have very much confidence in you. <laughs> and I'm the monster. <laughs> Post insight check, Jib still said that. That's real nice. We can discuss all this on the way back to the up here. I'll climb, unless there's your belongings they took lying about here somewhere. You look around the room and no. This poor chap is going back in public wearing next to nothing. He's gonna oh. fucking freeze to death. No, I'll be fine. <laughs> When you mentioned the uphill climb... Ah, so you working with Kessa. I thought that much was obvious. You seem to have, a just by your tone, a bit of disdain for her. I appreciate the work you've done, and I do appreciate the work she's doing, but it's hard, you know? No one here believes in me. That's made much more difficult. When you have an entity like Vetus, people place their faith elsewhere, not in me. The uphill climb, you said? Let's go. I'm terribly tired. Let's get on back there. If I might offer you a bit of advice. You know, leadership is difficult. Authority generally don't justify itself, so people don't believe in you. Maybe you're not doing enough for them to justify the things that you can lord over them. Think about doing more for your people. He slumps down again, looking sad for himself, and doesn't respond. I don't feel sorry for this municipal government official. Fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> Everett, hearing these words as we walk, puts a hand on his forehead and winces uncomfortably before continuing on. Ooh, character flavor. Interesting. Jib feels bad for this guy. He's the mayor of the worst place in the fucking world. <laughs> and now people are getting murdered on top of that. <laughs> you know. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> Jib sympathizes. As the DM that created the flavor of Kranich for this campaign, I agree with both of you, actually. Yeah. Anyway. 
uh, I don't like Kranich, but also, like, I wouldn't want to be Kranich, so whatever. Anyway, if there's no other RP you all want to do here, I'll just say you make your way to the uphill climb and you walk up the stairs to meet Kessa, but let me know. Is Alisar there before anything? What I'm going to have you do is when you walk up the stairs, you'll see Alisar at Kessa's side. I would go in, I would ask Rourke where Alisar is, and that would bring me upstairs. Yep, basically. Nothing for me. All right, awesome. You all make your way upstairs. You have Kranich. He's leaning on you all, doing his best to keep his shit together here. You walk upstairs. You can clearly see Alisar at the side of Kessa sitting down at the table. Kessa's moved aside some of the papers that were on the table and just has a meal out for him and he's just eating his food. Before Kessa focuses her gaze on you, you can see she looks at him kind of delicately and gingerly as if with a note of sympathy. And she looks up. Ah, the three of you have been waiting. What's going on? Okay, good, great. Tell me everything. Oh, oh, she says as she notices Kranich. I see you found our speaker. And then she beckons you in to sit down and give her a report. Jib slumps down in the chair kind of puts his head in his hands. Yeah, Wink wearily climbs up on another chair. Everett remains standing. Silently. There it is. I was like, all right, what moody <laughs> flavor we got? It's that one. We got him. All right, cool. The young boy came to see me and told me a little bit of what is going on. It sounds like the black sword. Quim was right. I should have paid more attention to him. That is my fault. So the three of you went in. What'd you find? She eyeballs Kranich as if one obvious answer is sitting in front of her. What do y'all know about Wraithsite? Wraithsite, Yes. Oh, yes, this, of course. Wraithesite is uh, recently being manufactured at the Crimson Glimmer Mines in Tourmaline. Tourmaline, you say? Indeed. You all can roll me history with the lowest fucking DC on the planet. Is it lower than two? Is it lower than eight? (laughs) (laughs) It's lower than eight. Um... (laughs) Jib, you're maybe just looking at the kid's meal and you're realizing you're hungry. I don't know where you're at right now, but you didn't really catch what you said. On an 8 and 11, you just know that Tourmaline is one of the 10 towns. It's relatively close by and it's to the west of here. You don't know much else. Again, both of you relative outsiders to Ice Window. can imagine what this cult would want it for. Now, that mine, is that owned by Fail Barosh? The Crimson Glimmer Mines is owned by Fail Barosh. I will say that, unfortunately, due to, well, disregard... My comment about it being unfortunate, that is not my place to say. Due to Failbrosh's recent selling off of their properties, while they have maintained the union here in Carrie de Nivelle so far to date, they have gotten rid of it in Tamerlane. It's no matter. The Crimson Glimmer Mines is owned by Failbrosh, and it is manufacturing Wraithesite. They sold that property? The mine? So what she was saying is that they did not sell off this property, but because they are selling off lots of property, it is allowing them to disband their unions throughout. And Tourmaline is now unionless, but still under the ownership of Fail Barrage. Okay. Jimmy, you know about unions in real life? Don't get caught up in that. This shit ain't real life. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well. It's a magic union. Yeah, the magic union. It's different. Jib's part of a union. And what is this site used for? I can say that in Fail Barrage's capacity... It is used for all manner of things, whether being smelted into armor or shields or what have you. Really, nothing out of the ordinary as far as Fail Barash is concerned. It wasn't really of interest to us outside of the fact that Crimson Glimmer Mines is owned by Fail Barash, and we expect an attack there at some point. Didn't really know there was a connection to Wraithesite until you've brought it up. You know, there's a pretty substantial connection, I would say. These cultists were hoarding quite a large amount of it. We found, you know, a whole storeroom that they had emptied out. And I couldn't make this out entirely, but I pulled the documents out of my bag and put them on the table. From what we overheard their leader saying before he bit his tongue out, that Wraithesite was promised to them. And if I may make an assumption, that means they were receiving it as a currency in exchange for... Some sort of action. My guess is these killings. Wink, I am very glad we hired you. That is astute. I think it might be best to get to the bottom of what this Wraithesite may be used for by these cultists. Probably something, I don't know, some ill tidings. Sorry, I had to. I was really trying to work ill tidings. No, I see you. <laughs> I was trying I to work you. ill tidings organically. I see you. All right. I wonder what benefit it has over steel, for instance. They must have some other use for it. Well, I will say I'm a bit disappointed that you decided to stay there and not come and get us, but it is what it is. Now they've made off with the most of it. We'll do our best to chase them down, but I would ask that the three of you make way for Tourmaline. You can spend the night in Dinev's rest if you need it, but in the morning you should make haste to Tourmaline. I'm sorry we didn't loop you in on that. It was kind of a delicate situation. She just stares at you. Might be easy if we had some way to get in reliable contact with you. Vetus is a pretty well-supplied corporation. 
as I'm given to understand. Y'all got sending stones you can spare or something like that? Hmm. Yes, I'll see if Yalin can procure something from the storehouse. If so, I'll be sure to leave it with Dinev in the morning for you. Well, thank you. All right, best be off. Got a big day tomorrow. Everett's already out the door. Alistair looks up to you, Wink, and gives you a smile that lets you know he feels safe. Okay, I turn to Kessa before I leave. I'll make sure that young'un's well taken care of. You hear? And I hop off the chair and make for the exit. As you all leave, you just hear Kranich ask for food, too. <laughs> Usual sad, demure state. Anything you want to do, or do you want to go to dinner's rest and call it an evening? How about that drink? I certainly think we've earned it. Everett? <sighs> I do not drink jib, but there is many things, I think. Discussing. You will just make a seat at Rourke's bar side in the uphill climb. It's a lot later than it was last time you were here, so there's not as many people. The chatter is a lot less, so very easy to have a conversation amongst the three of you. Rourke's like, oh, my three new friends, how you doing? What would you like? What do you drink, Wink? Oh, what don't I drink? <laughs> Good answer. Let's see. You know, that special weren't too bad for being northern stuff. I'll have a full pint of that. Same here. Full pint, huh? Wow, okay. It does come in those, right? It comes in pints! <laughs> Gotta get my halfling bits in where I can. Look, I saw you bring Kranich back. Really grateful for that, I am. This one's on the house. Enjoy. Much obliged. Thank you. Work hands you your drinks, and then goes off. It's getting close to closing time for good old Rourke. So Rourke's gonna just be cleaning up the bar area. And over the course of your conversation, you'll see it die down even more in the bar. So, Jib, what'd you do before you took up the adventure in life? Oh, I was a rope hauler. I haul rope. <laughs> Good thing you clarified that. So, so... <laughs> Y'all just spent your whole life hauling rope? Oh, yeah. There's that much need for rope hauling? Oh, of course. All up and down the coast. You know, we sea elves are well-suited for work adjacent to the water. You know, I spend my whole life hauling rope. My father spent his whole life hauling rope. Uncle Jetty, until he, uh, <laughs> passed... <laughs> Hauling rope. Well, what made you decide to stop hauling rope? Oh, well, well, you know, unfortunately, my Uncle Jetty passed late last year. You know, everyone commended him on such a great long career hauling rope. They thought it was just such a great commitment. But uh, I saw it a little differently. And I realized that uh, I don't want to spend my whole life just hauling rope. So I decided I need to get out and see the world. I think that's right admirable. You know, I don't want to belittle your profession, but what do y'all live? 600, 700, 800 years? Thereabouts. A little less if you're working with your hands and your back all day. I reckon you get to know all about all there is to know about rope hauling within the first 100, 200. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's not, not very complex work, no. I think it makes sense. You want to get to know all there is to know about something else. Many other things. This was just the first opportunity that came along. Let's see where it takes us. Cheers to that. Dink. <laughs> does, I'm gonna leave the dink. Wink... I'm gonna cut that out so you can put a sound effect. No, in. nope. I'm gonna put it back in. Wink makes that <laughs> noise. <laughs> oh yeah, that's great. I want to commit to that. The first opportunity you took, and it brought you here to this cold and miserable place. Yeah, you know I'm from the north. Technically, it's south of here, but we call it the north. And so I, you know, I thought I was accustomed to cold, but it's not cold like this in the north. I guess to the south. <laughs> <laughs> in the north to the south <laughs> gold just gold flashes, flashes of Clark going but if they know that we know that <laughs> oh my god <laughs> <laughs> yeah pretty dynamite and you Everett what about me you ended up here too how's the thing like that happen I have my reasons I would like to leave it at that for now let us just say while I am here to complete this job, as are the two of you, that is not the only reason I have come to this wasted place. I am looking for some. Is it something we might be able to help you find? Something we can keep our eyes out for? Six eyes is better than two, as we say in Red Rock. <laughs> Specifically six comes up in Red Rock all the time. <laughs> I sort of breathe deeply for a moment, and you can almost hear the wheeze pass through his breath. The answers I seek, they are not as simple as asking around this place or that, falling into a cultist's hideout, or saving a child from 
squalor. Once, as you say, perhaps. Something you said, Wink. Something you said to that speaker. Give me a flash of, like a bad memory that you forget and then remember some time later. Yes, maybe. Maybe others may help. It remains to be seen, though. Well, if you need our help, don't hesitate to call for it. We won't know unless you do. Plenty of strangers come in and out of your life, you know. You don't have to stay that way. That's all I'm saying. Man, Wink is just so likable. God. <laughs> but we know that this scene yeah, needs to end with Everett going, I have traveled far. My search has only just begun. Very cool. Over the course of this conversation, Jib would have gotten up, gone to the bar, got another round of drinks. Probably at least one or two more rounds, depending on how Wink is doing over there. I don't know. Do you want me to make a con save, Jeffy? Because Wink will keep drinking if <laughs> no, Jib no. keeps it flowing. I think the only <laughs> way it would change the outcome is that you have to lean on the shoulder of Jib on your way back to dinner's rest. I'm <laughs> going to be leaning on the waist of Jib at the <laughs> Fair, at the <laughs> yeah. Fair. But no, there would be no... Yeah, Jib is like 6'4". I'm not going to do a con save because y'all are just building a relationship. It's not going to factor into any roles. The next thing y'all are doing is going to bed, so you can drink as much as you want. Okay. You're not driving, so it's fine. It's all above board. Please be responsible. All right. Wink pukes on the walk back. Yeah, worst case. <laughs> you know, I'm glad we got to know each other tonight. It's uh, <laughs> going to be good working with you, I think. I, I think so, too. <laughs> Ooh. Everett quietly keeping an eye over both shoulders, walking behind this ridiculous conversation in the snow. I think we're going to be good friends. I think we are. I think we're in it for the long haul, and I know a thing or two about <laughs> hauling. <laughs> Phenomenal. <laughs> Under his breath, about 12 feet back from this conversation. I did not come here to make friends. What am I doing? Make sure I don't walk too close to that cliffside there. That looks like a long way down. All right. I will say no one falls off the cliff. You all make it to dinner's rest. You make your way upstairs. You all each have separate beds. That's not a problem. One thing I will say is while you sleep... If there's anything you want to do... I don't sleep. Whatever. Everett also doesn't sleep. Am I the only one who doesn't fucking trance in this group? Okay. Everett doesn't trance either. No, Everett inerts. Inerts? <laughs> what are you, sentries rest? What? What is it, actually? No, it's... Okay. Deathless nature. Oh, okay. I literally... Here's a dump here! Blah! Describe it for me, though, Andy. The rest aspect is identical to centuries rest mm -hmm. four hours inactive but you are still conscious okay cool in your inactive state and though you are conscious roll a d6 for me i'll just get in that as we all begin to take a rest you would find everett blankly staring out the window of our room that's what i was gonna do oh all right no it's fine <laughs> i mean that makes sense what else are you gonna do yeah D6, that's a two. On a two, though conscious, you are interrupted by... You don't know if it's a memory. You don't know if it's a vision. You're not really sure what it is, but what you see before you, mm -hmm. outdoors in the snow, the silhouette of a little girl, mm -hmm. and you just hear her voice say to you, She is dead. She has died. And now you, you know what to do. You need to find me. And that is it. For a moment, a real out of that small vision. Then I would probably spend the rest of the night pacing around, just sort of walking in this room about the inn. And maybe even, I wouldn't go very far, but just sort of walk around outside, just sort of thinking about that image. Died how? This mystery, these deaths, this. Why? Just sort of over and over. Other than that, everybody gets good whatever the hell they do. Trance. Trancing, sleeping, inert, deathlessness. You all get your... So these are just... We're all in the same room? Yeah, well, I forgot the two of you don't sleep, and I, I think last episode said that there are five beds here, so you all had separate beds. Doesn't matter. <laughs> two of you don't really need them. It's fine. I'm going to build, like, a blanket for it, just for a little bit of privacy to trance inside of. Wink, you have five beds. To, to lay in. <laughs> you have five beds. I pick the smallest one because it's probably the easiest one for me to get into. <laughs> Perfect. You all receive the benefits of a long rest and you wake up and you can make your way downstairs and Diniv will flag you over and without saying a word, we'll just hand you a piece of paper and it'll say, thought you'd like to know. Sorry, bastards on the mend. Kranich's looking a lot better. The boy is doing well too. 
But now, off to Tourmaline, post-haste. You go through Carowind Mountains to the west of town. Oris is the speaker. Grant runs the mines. Should be able to figure out the rest. I hope you can anyway. Dot, dot, dot. But just in case. And you'll see alongside of it a sending stone. And other than that, you all can make your way out of town. Unless there's anything else you want to do. There will be a clear pathway out of town. Her demeanor leads me to believe she has very little confidence in us. Well, you know these overseer types. They don't think much of them what's beneath them. You got that right. But also think that someone in her line of work is probably quite paranoid. Doesn't trust much. (sighs) Well, we ain't getting any younger. Let's go. Very cool. So, in the case of uh, Everett, Everett's probably also not getting any older, though. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, That's a great observation. You all exit on the west end of town, and you can definitely see in the distance the Carowind Mountains. Because it is a tundra, it is nothing but flat snow for quite a while. You see the outline of the mountains, it is looming. It gives all of you a sense of, like, holy shit, we've got a trek ahead of us. Basically, is the feeling that you all get as you round the corner at the edge of town and see just how far of a walk through the tundra you have ahead of you. And our first instance of skill checks for this campaign are going to happen now. You all make your way out into the cold snow. Wink, thankfully, having found those boots from Yallin earlier yesterday. You're feeling not horrible, but the first footfalls are made into the snow. Stay close. We would not want one another to be lost in this wasteland. And in that wasteland, you start to make way. First set of checks is going to be pretty straightforward. I'm just going to average them out. The only rule is you can make the same one, just not twice in a row. So you can do nature, then survival, then nature again, if you're good at nature, but not survival. You can repeat checks, just not twice in a row. So for these first ones, you are welcome to make either nature, survival, athletics, or perception. And just describe for me kind of what you're doing to help the party trudge through this snow and not lose your way. I'm going to use athletics. I'm going to put some of the stuff that the party is carrying on my shield and pull it through the snow like a sled. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. That's cool. I like that. That's an eight. Okay. Well, that's too bad. (laughs) It's very heavy. It's, this is not like hauling rope. This is, (laughs) it's it's a lot slipperier than I'm used to. All right. The weight's a little off. Just two clarifications. We can't technically be lost unless it's by an actual spell or something affecting our travel. And it says here, even in what you are engaged in another activity while traveling, you remain alert to danger. Just to throw that out there. All right, awesome. It's also probably worth mentioning that I can speak to animals that have swimming speed in case that were to come up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just in case you <laughs> encounter an ocean <laughs> problem. I mean, like a walrus or fucking... Well, and frozen lakes. Frozen lakes are a thing. Cool. And Annie heard that there are other dangers here besides getting ambushed and getting lost, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. So, yeah. Wink is no stranger to the outdoors. They are going to roll survival and try and use some of their outdoors folk ship to help guide us in the right direction. And I rolled a 17, so that'll be a dirty 20. Beautiful. All right. Well, these trees might look a bit different, but moss still grow on the same side of them. You are quite adept. And I will follow that up with perception. Andy, go for it. Basically trying to keep our bearings on course, make sure we're traveling the safest route, being as alert as possible. Here I go. Oof. Even with Natural Explorer, that is only a 10. Oh, wow. Okay. Everett seems to be a little distracted by these goddamn people and their fucking likability. <laughs> Rounding up, you just pass <laughs> the DC 13 on Ooh. this, so you're good to go. Let's do round two. Again, you just can't reuse the same one twice in a row. All right. Let's see. Perception. It's going to be perception. I'm going to watch the weather. <laughs> Watching the clouds. There's a bird overhead as oh, I'm doing this. Oh, right. And an albatross circles overhead. That's right. It is an albatross. That's an 11. Cool. Moving up in the world. That's right. Yeah, on an 11, it looks like clear skies for now. You can see far off in the distance near the mountains. It gets grayer as you look past and further beyond where you can see, but that's about it. Wink, what would you like to do? I think Wink has maybe sort of here and there picked up a bit of natural lore 
And we'll try and recollect some of that to help. So nature, uh, a natural one, but a lucky halfling gets to try again. Yes. Oh, wow. Oh, no. We've improved by an entire four points, so seven. Oh, oh man. man. Oh, God. Okay. All right. Let me warm up this blue dice here. Yeah, go ahead and <laughs> warm it up from here the cold. Here we go. Here comes the loaded die. Save us. I'm going to use my best stat. I'm going to try survival this time. I take a deep breath. I look at the snow and the terrain around. I try as best as Everett can. He's so used to being alone and doing this kind of shit by himself. But he's got to try and get these fools across these mountains. And I roll a dirty 20. I calculated in advance what you would have needed, and it was a 23. No! Unfortunately. (laughs) Oh, God. So, yeah. All right. So, so Jamie, you did a perception check to kind of see the weather. Unfortunately, while you could kind of get a sense of what was up in the sky, you were looking at that bird. You couldn't get a sense of it, and you couldn't really hear it, but suddenly a heavy gale wind will pass and cut through (laughs) your party as all of you... That bird take three, we're going to call this frosting, even though it's lame, you're being buffeted by the cold, frigid air. The damage type is cold, not frost. MMORPG player by nature, sorry. Cold. All good, all good. That is what it's called in my eyes. Three cold damage? Three not frost damage. So. Okay. Okay. Give that one a try again. I thought those birds were supposed to be good luck. Isn't that the opposite of what an albatross yeah, is? Yeah, I'm nearly <laughs> No, 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 no. That's a common misconception. Killing the albatross is yeah. bad luck. Yeah. The albatross is good oh. luck. Right. Oh, I didn't know that. I've read The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. I should know this. I think a lot of people do associate it with bad luck, though, because of The Rhyme of the Ancient Mariner. I was reading a little bit about albatrosses earlier today for this bit. This goes somewhere. Keep listening, folks. Nice. <laughs> we don't have to go in the same order again, do we? We need to think of something. If anyone's got anything. Doesn't matter to me. I'll go. Everett. Seeing the party be buffeted by this cold, Everett's going to react by trying athletics, helping clear the path here as we continue on. That's a 23. If only you got that last time. I know. God fucking damn it. <laughs> cool, cool. What's a little cold damage between party allies? Ooh, I'm getting too old for this sort of thing. Hang on, I'm going to see if I can't find that path again. I'm going to roll survival. Just try and get out of this bad weather. 13. Cool. Mm-hmm. All right. I'm going to use athletics again. And what am I going to do? You almost can't fuck this up. Let's see what happens. I can't wait. <laughs> You have to open your mouth, Jeppy. <laughs> Jeppy. You've invited Jimmy I Dice have invited to come Jimmy onto the Dice. table. Just at this open point. the door. I gotta say. There's the dice that's Listen. all ones. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is all ones. That's weird. I didn't notice that earlier. No, I gotta say, like, we're only two sessions in, but it hasn't felt very Jimmy Dice lately. So, you know. I haven't been mentioning it, but those are some pretty bad rolls all session so far. Okay. <laughs> Doing pretty badly. Oh, God. I need a way to flavor this athletics check. Unless you're, like, desperate for an idea, I'll throw you one. We could just move this along. If you have a really good idea, go for it. What, what was it? I mean, it's an idea. But you, you see a big snow bank and you just punch through it to make it easier for everyone to walk. Punch through it? <laughs> yeah, there's, like, these snow drifts from all the wind blowing around, and I'm going to use my shield to kind of dig the snow out from in front of us. That. That's way better than punching a snow Ooh. bank. And that's... <laughs> But thank you for the inspiration, Jeffy. That's uh, 21. All yeah, right. that's more than the five that you needed, so you go ahead and pass that. See, so wasted that. We're going to go ahead and do one more round here for now. For now. For now. All right. Over the course of this journey, how far have we made it in this day's travel, would you say? You think you're making actually pretty good pace at this point. You feel like you might even be more than halfway there at this point. Okay. So we're in the mountains by now? No, 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 no. To the foot of the mountain. Halfway to the mountains, thank you. Okay, cool. Okay, Everett's going to use survival again. Feeling a little more confident about that leg of the trek. You see a now somewhat familiar dull flare of his eyes as he looks towards these mountains that are looming closer. And I get a 21. Beautiful. Nice, nice, nice. Hey, Wink. Or, I'm Wink. (laughs) (laughs) Big pardon. Hey, Jim. Yeah, Wink? I don't weigh much. Can I get on your shoulders a second? I thought I saw something up ahead, and I just want to make sure it's nothing dangerous. 
Oh, sure thing. Have at it. I'm going to climb up piggyback on Jib and roll perceptions oh. for my... Great. So good. Aw, it didn't roll well. It's only an eight. Oh, I'm sorry to bother you. Must have just been my ass. I'll get down now. Oh, that's all right. Well, let's switch places. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I don't know if I can manage that. Amazing. You'll be okay. I don't weigh that much. <laughs> Is that what you're doing with your roll? <laughs> I'm doing exactly what Wink just did. Yes, roll perception. If Wink will allow it. <laughs> this is the dumbest thing. You can try it. I don't know if I need to make any sort of check. Here's how we're going to do this. Jimmy, I need you to roll acrobatics to gracefully get on Wink, and Wink, you need to make a strength save. Yep. The consequence of this will not be hurting Wink. It'll be you having this roll with disadvantage. This doesn't seem worth it. I could just play for my perception check another way. I mean, I think it's worth it. <laughs> I was going to note that Jib on Wink's shoulders is the same height as <laughs> Wink on Jib's shoulder. Yeah, we'll, we'll see about that. Roll. <laughs> Come on, we've got to do this. This is too good. All right, fine, fine. All right, here's acrobatics. That's a nat one. <laughs> oh, dear. Which fucking sucks, because acrobatics is my single one best skill. Okay, on the one, you don't need to make the strength save. You're just going to roll this perception with disadvantage. Great. Because Jeppy opened his big mouth. What was that perception? Nine. Okay. Through rounding, you just pass. Great. You just pass. The party now feels like you're making really good pace. You are definitely at this point more than halfway. And I would like the three of you at this point to make me a group perception check, please. You know what? 19. So that's an eight. I also rolled an eight. All right. At first, Everett, you had thought maybe you had seen some footprints in the snow leading somewhere and you had gone to tell the party that you thought you saw something but as you looked you'd lost sight of them and as the three of you were starting to look around to try and find these footprints caught pretty off guard and as you look up now you're seeing that kind of grayer skies that Jib had noticed earlier is coming closer and closer to you and it's not too long before now you are in the midst of a blizzard so what has happened now is the sky has gone a little bit more gray it's harder to make out where the mountain is, how far it is. At this point, we are going to continue to do checks. You'll now be fighting through this blizzard. As you're fighting through this blizzard, trying to make sure that you're heading in the most straightforward way so you can get there, what is gonna happen is the blizzard is gonna continue to hit you with wind, it's gonna be cold, and you're gonna have what I'm calling an exhaustion pool mechanic for this. The way it's gonna work is you all start with a certain number in your exhaustion pool. It is gonna be 13 points. Every failed check, you will lose three points. Every tied check, you will lose two. And every pass, you will only lose one. Based on the results of your failures, there may be opportunities to lose more points. You have 13 points of exhaustion before you take a level of exhaustion. Okay, cool. I like that. Okay. For this, I will allow the same checks as before with the exception of perception. It's pretty blinding, this blizzard. There's not really much advantage you'll get from taking a look around your surroundings. All you're really looking at is, is the mountain still in front of us? So you have nature, survival, or athletics to choose from for these. Okay. You are all welcome to roll. Okay, survival it is. Here we go. I reckon we better find some shelter. (laughs) Fucking incredible. (laughs) And I'll be finding it with that natural 20. All right, plus mod as well. What are you getting? 23 total. Love that. Starting to strong. All right. I'm going to use athletics to move some stuff, maybe like a log or other kinds of things to prop up a bit of shelter in this ideal location where Wink found it. It's another nat one. So that's a total of four. Whoa. I reckon you are correct, Wink. <laughs> and I will also try and roll survive. I kind of wish Everett always spoke like that. <laughs> Not gonna. Damn it. It's kind of like Venzola. That is a 24. Beautiful. You pass the first leg of this, and on a pass, you only remove one exhaustion point from the pool. Great. Cool. All right. Second round. I would like to roll nature, which is something I'm not particularly good at, and I'm going to try to, through the haze of this blizzard, try to discern the direction of the sun to maybe keep us moving in the right direction. Cool, cool, cool. Okay, this is the fourth die that I've rolled. Oh. And this is a two. Plus zero. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> I mean, it's like... 
It's like Olympic level bad. It's like, I don't believe in any of this shit, but... But the Afadigato dice curse is real. It's incredible. Like, I literally don't believe in anything like that. <laughs> and it, it follows me anyway. It, Unreal. Sure. Alexa come in and start making <laughs> For real, we should try. That. Maybe I'll start using like a like a digital like a dice clicker. I won't, yeah, thing. worth experiment. Or or put all of your d20s on the very edge of your desk and just have your cat knock them all off. Ah, yeah. Yes, <laughs> throw there you go. Roll hella good. Clover, Jeppy. All right. I'm also going to roll nature. Not not the sun's that away, which means north's that away. I think. Sixteen. Think pretty yeah, but Jib pointed to the ground, so you definitely did. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! It's a glare off the snow. Well, there's the sun. <laughs> right. Come on, Ranger! Help us, Ranger! Yeah, I'm trying. Um, Do Ranger things. So, Everett actually, nature is not a good stat for him. He's not that kind of Ranger. But I am gonna try athletics again, and you see Everett take out his hand axe his shovel, all of the shit from his monster hunter's pack, and just trying to forge whatever sort of path, just brute force, real, like, wiry old man energy going into this roll. And I only get a 13. I'm going to use knowledge of a past life on this, because I feel like that's not going to be enough. Adding a 6 that's a four for a 17. Yeah, unfortunately, that is not a pass. Damn it! You will lose three points. Darn it! Let me roll a dice here, see what happens. Okay. As you're making your way through this blizzard, you start to notice when you're looking up at the sky and you're trying to find out where the sun is, you start to notice eyes around you. They're in one spot one minute, they're in another spot the other. Who's out there? Come on, get out and show yourself! It distracts all of you for quite a while, long enough to the point where once the eyes vanish, you realize that you've just lost more valuable time and you're going to be stuck in this miserable, cold, windy, garbage, desolate weather for even longer. That thought alone will actually expend another exhaustion point from your pool as you realize, oh my god, we've been distracted and we're stuck here even longer. As you survey the area as well, seeing the bleak nothingness all around you, you will all take only two points of psychic damage. All right, let's try again. All right, Jib is going to pull his bootlaces real tight, trudge to the top of a hill, and try again to see if he can get a better view. Pretty steep, so that's going to be athletics. Cool, cool. Jimmy, what's the dice? It's another one. It's literally another unique die. It's the fifth one, and that's a three. <laughs> this has to be a record. Well, the next one will be a four. Look yeah. on the bright side. And I'll just roll 20s for the rest of my life, but I'll have to roll every other number first. <laughs> what's your mod? What's it bring it to? Six. Okay. Link and Everett. Jib lives in the water. The ice, is, uh, ice is super effective against him. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to try survival again. I don't have any flavor to this. This is a garbage day <laughs> in garbage weather. Uh, You're using a survival check to survive. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we got a 14 in here. Beautiful. That's fine. I'm also going to go back to survival. There is something I specifically want to do with this, and that's keep a fucking eye out for whatever this <laughs> shit going on in the snow is like these <laughs> eyes like god yeah. what is happening <laughs> eyes. Real quick, props to andy for being the only one that's like hey maybe that's something we should pay attention to <laughs> everyone else like i'm gonna pull up my bootstraps and climb up the hill maybe they're friendly <laughs> maybe they're friendly i do not think they're friendly be on your god 29 <laughs> the fuck 19 plus 10 Plus 10. Nice. That is... It's a pass. Ranger's gonna range. Okay. How is that, though, right? You got four from your proficiency. Where's the other six coming from? I've got my plus four from wisdom, plus four from proficiency, and then instead of favored folk, I have canny instead, which is I can pick a skill and take expertise on it. Mm. I wasn't under the impression that expertise stacked. Most things don't stack anywhere in the game. Never double dip when using proficiency bonus, says Jeremy Crawford in 2016. So that would have been a 27 then? Cool. Yeah, still passes. Only a 27. They've taken everything from me. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> there goes the ability to roll a 30 on that 20. Oh, well. 
Oh, you hate to see it. Well, anyway, roll something still very high on this next round. Just wait until I get past without traces. <laughs> I'll get my 38 still. All right, another round. All right. Oh, did we lose anything from that round? You, oh, Just you always one. lose so one. We're yeah, at... You always lose at least one. You always lose one. So we're down to seven? Actually, technically, this is a tie. You are down to six because you lose two in a tie. Okay. Get some rolling nature again. Just going to look out into the nature and see if I can nature anything. That roll didn't get me anything on those eyes, did it? You can't see them anymore. You can roll inside on that if you want. Yeah, I feel like they might be almost illusory or something. Insight, that's a 22. Yeah, on a 22, you know that whatever it is, is out here in this wilderness. You don't know if it's illusory, if it's real, if it's magical in nature, or just some sort of beast. But you do know for sure that like whatever it is, is probably stalking you and trying not to be seen only stalking you when it sees a moment of like pause and opportunity. Y'all pause. Sorry, go ahead. Seeing that Jib has been having some rough luck on this journey, I will try and provide a bit of bardic inspiration for this check. If you still want to do it, I mean, I already rolled. I think Wink would have done this regardless. Okay. And again, it's an average thing, so a higher number can only help us. That's yeah, true. That's I will play an open chord with my gloved hand on my Shivering. banjo <laughs> and just so good. like sing out a little. Don't let the cold get you down, Jib. At least you're not hauling rope. <laughs> and take a part of consideration. Jib's teeth chatter. At least if I were holding rope, I'd be doing something I'm good at. I'm going to use the bardic. Your song still somehow warms my heart. All right, 17. Very nice. Yeah, there we go. That's the sixth and final d20 that I have on my desk. Rolled a 15, so I'm keeping that one for a while. Okay. Let's see, I just did survival, which means back to athletics. Nat 20, total of 25. I will roll nature and curse the weather. <laughs> oh, man, and that one. Rasa frasa, this goddamn blizzard. Good thing I'm blessed with the halfling's luck. Still only a nine, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> the humble shift in tone. <laughs> All right, you do better than a one. It's better than a one. Better than a one. It is a game of averages. Hopefully, this pushes us. It does. It pushes you to a tie, and yeah, you have four points left, and you're on your last check. So good luck. Uh, sheesh. All right, athletics. It is then doing something very athletic here. Eleven. Cool. I believe I'm back to survival for this particular check. I will attempt to survive in a blizzard, exposed. That's your situation. It's a great way to use your check. Yeah, 18. Beautiful. We'll hopefully nice. succeed at doing that. Nice, nice, nice. Everett is also going to try and survive by rolling survival. Best way to do it, I found. This was bound to happen eventually. Even blue dice have a one on them. <laughs> no! Rolled. Uh-oh. Yeah, hold on. It's still a nine. I could burn my second knowledge of the past. At most, we lose three points or four points? We lose three, and on a failure, a bad thing could happen, which could cost us extra points. I think Jeppy has some sort of D-something table. Right. I'm going to burn it. I know I said the last time I burned through them within literally hours. I regretted it, but I'm doing it anyways. Okay, that's a five. Fourteen total. I am afraid... That you have failed this check. Fuck! Uh, Your exhaustion pool is one. What happens next is up to this dice. What happens next is go fuck yourself. <laughs> Did you want the frozen north to be easy to navigate? <laughs> I can make it easy to navigate. That's no problem. Oh, no, not at all. Please, continue. But as you're doing that, go fuck yourself. Will do. All right, let me see what happens here. All right, let me see who rolled the lowest. Oh, well, yeah, that surprises nobody. <laughs> Jib. Oh. Jib, I'm sorry, buddy. Yeah, your total roll was the lowest, and yeah, you're trudging along. Giant hawk swoops down and kills me. <laughs> That's, there's the bird. <laughs> <laughs> As you're trudging along, you take a step into loose snow and just fall into a small ditch, taking five bludgeoning damage right from the fall everett just gets this sense that there's the danger of falling nearby and goes to alert the party as jib falls in a hole oh. <sighs> damn it 
Unfortunately, because all of you have to help Jib out, you take another two exhaustion points, and that puts you beyond zero. All of you take a level of exhaustion. Boo. Your exhaustion pool is now reset, minus one at 12. My go fuck yourself stance. As it should. When I was talking about planning this game, you all told me to be brutal with these survival pieces in the winter. And that is what I am doing. I've fucking made the wrong character for this entire campaign. (sighs) I don't recall saying anything of that nature. I also don't mind. I think it was actually Andy that asked for the punishment. It was mostly me. The North is the North. What is to be done? The North is the North. You have one final check left to make. Good thing we're all rolling at disadvantage. The mountain is very much in sight. The leg of the journey is clearly coming to a close very soon. And as a result, like all of you have kind of steeled yourself. You will roll at disadvantage. Make no mistake. You're exhausted, but... Through that exhaustion, you're gritting through it and realizing that, by God, we may just do this thing. All right. Yeah. Okay. Back to athletics forever. It. Do you want some bardic inspiration? Uh, I think. Okay. Actually, <laughs> at disadvantage. <laughs> I'm sitting on a 15 right now, but I don't know what everybody else is gonna roll. So. It's true. <laughs> I don't know why okay. I went first. <laughs> well. Someone has to. There you go. Yeah. Do we have to use something different than we did last one? Or is it because it's a different round we can... I want to be kind. I really do. But this is still part of the same phase. You have to use a different... All right. I'm seconding the fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> All right. This is going to be nature. It's a flat roll with disadvantage. Hang on. Hang on. Uh, hey, now, Jim. Don't spare. You can see the mountains right over there. <laughs> <laughs> Tremendous. You know, you're right. Take a T6. All right. 13. Yes. Okay. That's a jib roll. I mean, we're looking good. Right there. We're looking hot. That's true. It's right there. Oh, here goes nature. It's a nine. Hope it gets us far enough. That average. It doesn't do it, folks. It doesn't do it, and I'm sorry. Let me roll these dice. Do not worry. Okay. I'm going to be a popsicle. We'll be fine. You have nine points in the chain. Well, you're about to have eight. Let me just go ahead. You're going to lose one more exhaustion point from this failure. Again, you notice these eyes looming over you. And as you do, you once again, this time we'll all take three points of psychic damage. All right, let's do this. This one's athletics. One of those was a nat 20. It is a dirty 20, though. Nice. Oh, there we go. Okay, okay, maybe, maybe this time. We'll see what I roll. I got a 10. Okay, okay, okay. All right. And on survival, just a used-to-be dead guy out here trying to survive. The irony. And that is a 22. By Job! You did it, folks. Cool. Awesome. (sighs) You all make your way. The snow is clearing away, and now you're stepping on solid ice. And as you step on the solid ice and you hear the crunch of that beneath your boot, you realize that, oh, ice. And you look up, and here you are at the foot of this mountain. The blizzard, it's still happening, but now that you're completely obscured by this large mountain, you're not being peppered with snow at all times. You can clearly see in front of you. However, what you do notice is that this mountain does not just have a normal trailhead or pathway to go up it. Instead, what you are stepping on is ice, and what that ice leads to is a sheer wall of ice. And as you look up, the three of you realize you will have to make the climb. And that's where we'll end the session. (laughs) <laughs> wait, wait, hang on. Before we end the session, just can I get real quick? You got it. Yeah. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> I, I was also going to say, like, if any of your characters want to react in character to that, I'm happy to end the session with like a character piece of dialogue. No, I like that. <laughs> cool. Everett exhales, saying nothing. Fuck this DM, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Pods of the Multiverse is produced by Jimmy Afadigato. That's me, with music by Andy Berger and art by Alexa Riley. Subscribe to this feed to get a new episode every Monday. Check out the links in the show notes. You can support us by visiting our Patreon, joining our Discord, or sharing this episode with a friend. We want to give a special shout out to our holy Avengers, Jake, May, and Chris. For $10 a month on our Patreon, you too can become a holy Avenger. Thanks for listening.